Good evening and welcome to the Evening News for Saturday, January 3, 2015. I'm Petty Lissandus. Thank you for joining us. Making your headlines this evening, three appointed assistant commissioners as the Ghana Police Force releases promotion list. Tamari man beaten to death. Ghana to introduce redesigned machine readable passports in 2015. Nine hospitalized after Sophia Blaze. Mining sector supports new gold board GM. And DPP's chambers disposed of 140 cases during 2014. And now for the news in detail. Air Division Commander Clifton Hicken, Crime Chief Leslie James and Senior Superintendent of Police Carl Chapman headed a list of promotions as the Ghana Police Force announced its promotions for 2015. Here is more from Bisham Mohammed. Hicken, James and Chapman were promoted to Assistant Commissioner of Police with additional duties attached. Clifton Hicken served as the ENF Divisional Commander for a number of years before he was transferred to head a division. In April also, Leslie James took over the Crime Chief post after Assistant Police Commissioner Silal Prasad took over as top cop from Leroy Brummel who went into retirement. Carl Chapman, however, is serving as second in command in B Division after he served for several years in A Division. In addition to the three top promotions, 324 other ranks within the Ghana Police Force were promoted. Eight ranks were promoted from Superintendent of Police to Senior Superintendent of Police. These include R. Andreas Duna, R. Budan, E. Watts, C. Brutus, S. Mansell, R. Das, W. Blanham, and L. Denny. Nine ranks were confirmed as Superintendent of Police and include K. Pasram, I. Trotz, W. D. Hart, D. Fowler Goodman, T. Paul, L. Lord, E. Cooper, J. Ramlakan, and M. Sutton. The promotion continues with 10 ranks being promoted to Deputy Superintendent of Police, 23 as Assistant Superintendent of Police, 5 as Chief Inspector, 33 as Inspector, 6 to 5 as Sergeants, 8 to 5 to Corporals, and 8 to 6 to Lance Corporals. Apart from the promotion, several ranks attached to regular special constabulary were also promoted. These promotions include 11 ranks were confirmed as sergeants, 23 to corporals and 35 to lance corporals. With, re with respect to the guide stock special constabulary, 9 ranks were confirmed to sergeant positions, 12 to corporal and 8 to lance corporal. The above mentioned promotions from the rank of corporal to sergeant, lance corporal and constable to corporal and constable to lance corporal have been approved by the Commission of Police with effect from January 1, 2015. Bisha Mohammed, Evening News. A battered Instacar can, age 26, also called Imran of Lot 106 Tamari Hyde Park, East Bank, Demerara, was found on Friday morning at Friendship East Bank, Demerara, by residents who immediately alerted the police. He was picked up and taken to the Diamond Diagnostic Center, but was transferred to the Georgian Public Hospital, where he later succumbed to his injuries. According to information received, Ken and his girlfriend had gone to Georgetown to celebrate the New Year, but an argument ensued between them, resulting in her leaving him in the city. He was reportedly under the influence of alcohol and told her to leave him. The circumstances surrounding the man's death are still sketchy, but the police have launched an investigation. Rita Ken, mother of the dead man, told the Evening News that it was after Istikar did not return home, they went to make a report to the police station and were given the bad news. His family was subsequently taken to the Georgian Public Hospital mortuary where they positively identified him. He leaves to mourn his parents and five siblings. Police are continuing their investigations. In this report, we hear that after over one week of gas shortages at the Gaiol outlets across the country, the situation has been remedied. The details in this report. Chief Executive Officer of the Guyana Oil Company, Badger Pasad, earlier today related that all gas fuel stations across the country have returned to normalcy on Friday. He said that all the outlets have been provided with fuel and assured that there will be no more shortage of such. According to the CEO, the shipment of fuel was supposed to arrive in Guyana on Monday but was delayed. However, he noted that because of 40 delays, the new estimated date for arrival was set for January 1. Persaud related that the shipment of fuel from Venezuela had arrived and 
fuel was dispatched to all of the pump stations and fuel distributors that were affected. Up to Thursday last, the fuel shortage, which was first reported in Essequibo, had spread to several parts of Georgetown and the east coast of Demerara. This situation would have forced gas stations to close its lanes to customers. The gas shortage had thrown the Essequibo's gas stations into chaos, and many residents had described the situation as the holiday spoiler. Reporting for the evening news, I'm Raiden James. In this Vanu Manik Chan report, we hear that the Director of Public Prosecutions Chambers has disposed of a total of 140 cases during the year 2014. Of the 140 cases disposed of by the DPP chambers last year, only 103 engaged the court's attention. The other 37 cases were null prosecuted by the DPP. In a year-end review of its cases, the chambers disclosed that of the 103 cases, 75 were done in the Demerara Assizes, 15 in the Burbies Assizes, and 13 in the Essequibo Assizes. There were a total of 69 cases for murder, 3 cases for manslaughter, 2 cases for attempt to commit murder, 32 cases for various sexual offenses, 2 cases for wounding with intent, 1 case for unlawful wounding, and 3 cases of robbery under arms, among others. A total of 30 convictions, 54 acquittals, 10 hung juries, 1 quash committal, and 2 aborted trials were recorded. In addition, one unrepresented accused was sent back to the prison after he indicated that he needed 5 years to prepare his defense. Then, a psychiatric evaluation was ordered for one accused after he was unresponsive to the court, and another was committed to the National Psychiatric Hospital for treatment until he is fit to stand trial. While in two other murder cases, both accused persons were found to be unfit to stand trial and ordered to be given psychiatric treatment, after which time they should be reassessed to determine if they are fit to stand trial. In another matter for the offense of carnal knowledge, the accused who was out on bail failed to attend court and the judge issued an arrest warrant. In the meanwhile, during 2014, some 50 matters were filed in the Court of Appeal by the Chambers. There are five applications pending for notices of hearing of appeals. According to the Chambers, 19 appeals were dismissed and six matters were dismissed. The Court allowed two appeals, one of which the appellant had three separate court hearings. On the other hand, five matters were heard in the Demerara Full Court during last year. Meanwhile, the Burbies Full Court heard three matters, and in the Caribbean Court of Justice, four matters were heard during 2014. Reporting for the Evening News, Vanu Manik Chan. A man is in police custody for the murder of 41-year-old Siebert Moore of Victoria Valley with Melinden, which occurred on Friday. According to information received, the now dead man and another man were imbibing at Frenchman Upper Demerara River when an argument started. The argument quickly led to a scuffle between the two men during which Moore was stabbed several times to his body. He was rushed to the Mackenzie Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The suspect was arrested and is assisting with investigations. This was the fourth murder committed over the holidays. Stay with us. You're watching the Evening News. Welcome back. In this Royden James report, you will hear that the Chief Immigration and Passport Office will soon introduce a new set of redesigned machine-readable passports. I reported in 2013 that efforts were underway to upgrade the machine-readable passports issuing on border control system, which, I, which was launched in July of 2007. This upgrade was facilitated during 2014 by the Canadian banknote company with the decommissioning of the old system and installation of new hardware 
and software components. That was Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi at the end of the year press conference held at his breakdown office. Rohi said the new redesigned document will safeguard the integrity of the Guyana passport. He said too that the passport should be implemented to the public during the new year with funding by the Canadian bank note company. In 2014 also, the Ministry of Home Affairs signed a contract with Canadian Bank Note Company Limited to upgrade the security features of Guyana's machine-readable passport in order to safeguard the integrity of the document. This process is almost complete and the new redesigned passport will come into being in 2015. The old passport will be gradually phased out. Meanwhile, in the area of border control and issuance of passport, the past two years saw a reduction of this process at divisions D, B, E and F, which brought satisfaction to persons who had to travel far distances to uplift their passports, which was the case some years ago. Also, machine-readable passport applicants living abroad would now have their necessary particulars obtained from the nearest overseas missions. Moreover, persons who will be applying for the new machine-readable passports will have to wait a short period of seven working days and not 14, which was previously announced. The waiting period for lost and damaged passports, however, will remain the same. Reporting for the Evening News, I am Royden James. The mining community has expressed their support for the appointment of Lisavita Ramatar as General Manager of the Ghana Gold Board. Head of the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission, Clinton Williams, while speaking with the Evening News today, expressed his support for Ramatar's appointment. Williams said, though he is not acquainted with Ramatar, he was impressed by her qualifications and anticipates a bright future for the Ghana Gold Board under her guidance. He hopes that her experience in banking, finance and investment will help to place Ghana firmly back in the marketplace and boost sales. Sales. Meanwhile, head of the Ghana Gold Miners Association, Patrick Harden, also shared the same sentiments. Harding felt the findings of the recent fraud case at the Guyana Gold Board Bartica branch should have been disclosed or reported to the GGDMA before hiring a new manager, but nevertheless wish Ramatar the best. Harding felt that this lingering fiasco is somewhat an injustice to Ramatar. After former Guyana Gold Board General Manager Anitram Balram resigned in the midst of a fraud investigation at GGB Bartica branch, Ramatar who is also the daughter of President Donald Ramata, recently acquired the post. According to reports, the new general manager took office on Friday last. Reporting for the Evening News, I'm Royden James. The Home Affairs Ministry will be expanding the stray catching program in its bid to keep animals off the roadways. The details in this report. This announcement was made by Home Affairs Minister Clement Rohi at his year-end press briefing. During the year 2015, the program will further be expanded to service the main roadways in E-Division and generally we continue to support the Guyana Police Force and the Road Safety Council in the efforts of promoting road safety in our country. I would like to take this opportunity to appeal to all cattle owners for their support in making our roadways safer by ensuring that the cattle are, are properly supervised during the grazing period. The minister explained that strays have been the cause of several accidents during 2014 which resulted in human deaths. Of the 134 accidents resulting in the death of 145 persons, two animals were involved resulting in two deaths, which reflect two more than the 2013 figure. For this reason, the program will be expanded for 2015, as it has already shown success for the year 2014. A total of 3,650 animals were caught straying on the main roadways in all the police division. This figure represents a 7.6% decrease against the 2013 figure of 4,434. Reporting for the Evening News, Fanu Manik Chen. Nine persons are now hospitalized after they were forced to jump out of a burning building at Seafield Sophia, which occurred on Friday evening. The fire reportedly started at about midnight while 10 persons were at home asleep. The two-story house went up in flames and is suspected to be the job of an arsonist who was identified as Gavin Graham. This newscast understands that Graham allegedly lit the house afire after a misunderstanding between him and another relative. 
A reliable source told the Evening News that Graham tried to see a woman sometime during the day to sort out an issue, but it proved futile. This triggered his temper, thus he reportedly returned Friday evening and doused the house with gasoline and then set it afire. Although the family and public-spirited citizens tried to save some of the items, the entire house was burnt to the ground. They estimate their losses to be approximately $1.7 million. A police investigation has been launched. And now for some news in the region. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro said he demanded respect from the United States during an encounter with Vice President Joe Biden in Brazil. Maduro and Biden met briefly after President Dilma Rousseff's inauguration ceremony in Brasilia. Maduro said, I have demanded this time what we have demanded from the U.S. a thousand times before, a relationship based on respect, nothing else. Last month, the U.S. imposed sanctions on high-level Venezuelan officials. And internationally, bad weather was the biggest factor in the crash of Air Asia flight QZ8501, the Indonesian Weather Agency believes. The BMKG agency said initial analysis suggested icy conditions in the air had caused the engine to stall. The Airbus A320 vanished with 162 people aboard and route from Indonesia to Singapore last Sunday. The discovery of four large objects believed to be plane debris has raised hopes of finding the fuselage where most of the bodies are believed to be trapped. Just 30 bodies have been recovered from the Java Sea as of Saturday morning. The plane's black boxes, its flight data and cockpit voice recorders have yet to be relocated. Here now are your bridge reports. The Demerara Harbour Bridge is expected to be closed at 14 hours 30 on Sunday, January 4, for a period of one and a half hours. And the Burbis River Bridge is expected to be closed at 15 hours 40 on Sunday, January 4, for a period of one and a half hours. Stay with us. Sport is next. presents a few more challenges. Keeping your business running shouldn't be one of them. That's why we work every day towards ensuring your overall satisfaction. With over 100 skilled technicians and engineers equipped with the tools and skills to help you do more. With the largest parts inventory in Guyana, over 10,000 line items readily available. Driven by your success, is not just a set of words to us. It is a code by which we live. That is why we are proud to say that we are proud. Welcome back and now for a look at your sport headlines. South Africa strengthens position against West Indies and Sri Lanka batsman Kumar Sangakkara passes 12,000 test runs. This segment of sport is sponsored by Macorp. Every day presents a few more challenges. Keeping your business running shouldn't be one of them. That's why we work every day towards ensuring your overall satisfaction. With over 100 skilled technicians and engineers equipped with the tools and skills to help you do more. With the largest parts inventory in Guyana, over 10,000 line items readily available. Driven by your success is not just a set of words to us. It is a code by which we live. That is why we are proud to say that we are proud. South Africa chipped away the West Indies' first innings total on day two of the third test at Newlands, 
reaching stumps on 227 to 3 to cut their deficit to just 102 runs. Faf de Plusis on 68 and Hasim Amla on 55 not out scored half centuries after the Proties had polished off the tourists for 329 in the morning session, scooping off the final four wickets they required in 49 minutes. AB de Villa's 32 not out and Amla put on an unbroken partnership of 70 for the fourth wicket before a downpour brought the premature end to the proceedings. South Africa needs just a draw in Cape Town to secure victory in the three-match series having won the opener at Centurion by an innings and 220 runs and seen the rain hit second test in Port Elizabeth end in a draw. Dale Stein and Morn Merkel took two scalps apiece first up on Saturday to ensure the West Indies added only 53 runs to their overnight score of 276 for six, the former ending the figures of four for 78, a day after becoming South Africa's second highest test wicket taker. German Blackwood on 56 completed the third test 50. And finally, Sri Lanka's batsman Kumar Sangakara has become the fastest player to reach 12,000 runs in test cricket and only the fifth to reach the landmark. The 37-year-old achieved the feat in his 224th test innings during his side's second test in New Zealand. India's Sachin Tendulkar and Australia's Ricky Ponting both needed 247 innings to surpass the mark. And that has brought us to the end of the evening news for today's Saturday, January 3, 2015. Do remember to get a copy of tomorrow's edition of the Ghana Times newspapers for the details of these stories and other news. I'm Petit Lissantis. Thank you for joining us.